Israel has threatened to take revenge on Iran. This is after Tehran launched a salvo of missiles and drones targeting Israel on Saturday night. Israel's former defense minister, Benny Gantz, has vowed to respond to Iran's attack when the time is right. He added that Israel will build a regional coalition in the face of the Iranian threat. Saturday's airstrikes were Iran's first direct attack against Israel. It was retaliation for an airstrike that leveled Iran's consulate in Syria on April 1st. Israel is believed to have been behind the strike in Syria. Meanwhile, the US has said that it will not take part in any potential Israeli retaliation against Iran. The American National Security spokesperson John Kirby said this in an interview. Kirby said that the US will continue to support and help Israel defend itself. However, he added that Washington is not seeking a wider war with Iran. The United Nations Sec uh, Security Council met on Sunday to discuss Iran's attack on Israel. At the meeting, Israel and Iran both accused each other of threatening peace in West Asia. Israel's ambassador to the UN outlined three key demands during the meeting. This included condemning Iran's attack, imposing more sanctions on them, and designating the Iranian Revolutionary Guards as a terrorist organization. France will summon Iran's ambassador over the attack on Israel. This is according to the French foreign minister. Separately, the country has also increased security measures, specifically around places of worship. This is due to a high level of terrorist threats in France. Iran's foreign minister, Hossein Amir Abdullah, has said that his country gave the U.S. a 72-hour notice before the attack on Israel. He added that the attacks were just aimed at punishing Israel. However, a U.S. official reportedly said that while Washington had spoken to Tehran, it did not get a warning 72 hours in advance. Meanwhile, Iran says it will allow Indian authorities to meet 17 Indian crew members who were working on a ship it has seized. Iran's foreign minister assured this to India's external affairs minister S. Jashankar during a call. Iranian commandos had seized an Israel-affiliated cargo vessel in the Gulf of Hormuz over the weekend. 17 Indians were part of that ship's crew. The trial in former U.S. President Donald Trump's hush money case is set to begin today. Ahead of the trial, Trump took to his social media platform Truth Social to pen a long post. Trump claims that he will not only fight for himself, but rather for the country. The former American president faces criminal charges for misrepresenting hush money payments made to a porn star called Stormy Daniels. In the U.S. state of Arizona, dozens of women protested for their reproductive rights. This came after a decision from Arizona's highest court, uh, which revived a 160-year-old abortion ban. The decision would impose a near-total ban on abortion in the state. In Brazil, the police have found a boat with decomposed bodies off the country's northern coast. Officials have launched an investigation into the case. Federal police said, uh, Brazilian federal police said that experts and forensic teams have been deployed to the remote area. The number, nationality and cause of death of the victims are not yet known. Six people were fatally stabbed in Sydney on Saturday. The Australian police have said that the attacker was likely targeting women. Five of the six people killed and most of the 12 people injured in the attack were women. The attack took place at a busy shopping centre in Sydney's beach suburb of Bondi. Hundreds have gone to the site to mourn the victims, including the country's Prime Minister, Anthony Albanese. Meanwhile, an Australian judge has ruled that a former political staffer is likely to have sexually assaulted a woman in the parliament. The judge threw out a defamation suit brought by the former staffer, Bruce Lehrman. He had sued Network 10 Television after it broadcast an interview with, it, with his alleged victim, Brittany Higgins. 
Chad's military junta leader and uh, interim president, Mohammed Idris Debi, kicked off his presidential campaign yesterday. This comes ahead of Chad's presidential election scheduled for next month. The polls are supposed to mark the end of years of military rule in the country. Today, Sudan marks a year of civil war. The United Nations has called for greater humanitarian assistance to aid refugees and those displaced in the conflict. France and Germany are leading an international donor conference in Paris today. This is to raise funds for humanitarian aid. Some 8.5 million people have been driven out of their homes in Sudan, leading to the world's largest displacement crisis. Seasonal, in, in climate news, seasonal rain in Afghanistan has triggered flash flooding. It killed at least 33 people and injured 27 others. The floods have hit the capital, Kabul, and nearby provinces. The, at least 600 houses have been damaged. The floodwaters also damaged at least 800 hectares of agricultural land. Tanzania's government reported that heavy rains and flooding have killed at least 58 people just this month. The country's coastal region has been the worst hit. More than 10,000 households have been affected and over 75,000 farms have been damaged by the flooding. A landslide has killed at least 15 people in the Democratic Republic of Congo. About 60 people are also missing after the landslide hit the southwestern part of the country. Heavy rain lashed the region, causing the, uh, the landslide. Meanwhile, at least 14 people have been killed in landslides in Indonesia. They took place in, on uh, Sulawesi Island. The landslides were triggered by torrential rainfall. Search and rescue missions are underway. Spain is experiencing record-breaking heat. Over the weekend, most of the country experienced temperatures that were 5 to 10 degrees Celsius higher than normal. In some parts, the mercury crossed 30 degrees Celsius. According to Spain's weather agency, warm air coming from Africa is causing temperatures to rise. Meanwhile, a massive wildfire engulfed Spain's Alicante province. The fire started in the mountains of Tarbena. Local authorities evacuated at least 180 people from their houses. The fire was fueled by the heat and also by excess vegetation around the area. According to an environmental research group called Carbon Market Watch, the Paris Olympics Committee is taking commendable steps to slash the event's carbon footprint. However, it is still falling short of global climate targets. Air travel is the major source of greenhouse gas emissions attached to the Olympic Games. The climate report says that the Olympic organizers have been silent on how they will address the issue. On to business and tech news. Major stock market indices in Asia declined as trading began today. Stock market investors remained on the edge after Iran's missile attack on Israel, raising concerns of a wider war in West Asia. Japan's Nikkei 225 slipped by over 1%, while Hong Kong's Hang Sen Index declined by 0.8%. Stock market indices in India and Australia were also trading in the red. Meanwhile, the cryptocurrency market was also impacted by the escalating tensions in West Asia. The world's largest cryptocurrency, Bitcoin, declined by around 8% following the Iranian strikes. The cryptocurrency is currently trading at around $63,000. Other major, major virtual currencies like Ethereum, Dogecoin and Solana have also dropped sharply. Chinese real estate developers need over $550 billion to complete their pending projects. This is according to a new report by Goldman Sachs. The report said that China's real estate industry, industry's condition continues to worsen. It added that the financial support provided by the Chinese government is not enough. The Chinese real estate firms have been struggling amid lower housing demand and rising debt. 
in India, EdTech firm Baiju's CEO Arjun Mohan has resigned. Baiju's has said that its founder Baiju Ravindran will take over the CEO's responsibilities. This comes as the firm has been going through a financial crisis. Separately, reports say Baiju's has consolidated its operations into three units. This includes the Baiju's Learning app, its online classes and tuition centers, and a test prep, app, prep unit. Electric car maker Tesla has reportedly signed a deal with Tata Electronics. Tata Electronics is the electronic manufacturing unit of India's Tata Group. It will manufacture semiconductor chips for Tesla. The deal comes ahead of Tesla CEO Elon Musk's visit to India. During the visit, Musk is expected to announce Tesla's investment plans in the country. Meanwhile, Tata Electronics is reportedly planning to hire 35,000 workers. That's because the firm is looking to boost production at its iPhone assembly plant in India's th state of Tamil Nadu. Last year, Tata Electronics became the first Indian supplier to the tech giant Apple. This was after it acquired the Taiwanese firm Wistron's assembly plant in India. Samsung has taken over Apple to, uh, has overtaken Apple to become the world's top uh, smartphone brand. This is according to a report by US market, market intelligence firm IDC. As per the report, Samsung sold over 60 million smartphone units globally in the first quarter of 2024. Meanwhile, Apple sold around 50 million iPhones in the same period. China's Xiaomi secured the third spot by selling over 40 million smartphones. American software firm Salesforce is reportedly planning to buy the US-based data management firm Informatica. Informatica offers data management and business automation services to other firms. The report says that a deal between the firms could be reached within a week. If it goes through, this is expected to be one of the largest acqui acquisition deals for Salesforce. The U.S. cybersecurity firm Rubrik is reportedly planning to raise over $700 million in its upcoming initial public offering. The firm is expected to sell around 23 million uh, shares during the IPO. The shares are likely to be priced in the range of $28 to $31 per share. Earlier this month, Rubrik filed an application to list its shares on the New York Stock Exchange. Artificial intelligence startup OpenAI has opened its first Asian office in the Japanese capital, Tokyo. The firm's Japanese building a business will be headed by Tadao Nagasaki. OpenAI has also introduced a new custom AI model for the Japanese language. This comes as the firm is looking to expand its revenue sources. Moving to sports, we start with cricket and the Indian Premier League. The Chennai Super Kings beat the Mumbai Indians by 20 runs yesterday. CSK went to bat first and posted 206 for four. Skipper Rutaraj Gaikwad scored 69 runs of 40 balls. MS Dhoni hit three consecutive sixes in the final over. Mumbai were restricted to 186 for six in their innings. MS Dhoni reached a milestone during yesterday's IPL match against Mumbai. He became just the second player in T20 history to feature in 250 matches for one team. Dhoni has featured in the IPL and the Champions League for the Chennai Super Kings. So far, only India's Virat Kohli has held this elite record. The Kolkata Knight Riders secured an eight-wicket win over the Lucknow Super Giants yesterday. The L LSG scored 161 for 7 in their 20 overs. Kolkata chased down the target with 26 balls to spare. Phil Salt smashed 89 of 47 balls, while Shreyas Ayer scored 38 to seal the win for Kolkata. In football, Arsenal lost 2-0 to Aston Villa in their top four clash in the English Premier League. Villa's goalkeeper Emi Martinez made a brilliant stop to deny Leandro Trossard in the first half. Leon Bailey and Ollie Watkins then scored for Villa late in the game. With the loss, the Gunners have now fallen two points behind table toppers Manchester City. 
It was a similar story for Liverpool as well, who went down 1-0 against Crystal Palace. Berechi Eze gave Palace a 14th-minute lead. Liverpool got a number of chances in the second half, but failed to respond. The Reds have now won just three of their last eight games across all competitions. Meanwhile in Germany, Bayer Leverkusen beat Werder Bremen 5-0 to win their maiden Bundesliga title. The victory marks the end of Bayern Munich's run of 11 consecutive league victories. Leverkusen can add even more titles this season, having reached the German Cup final and the Europa League quarterfinal. In tennis, Stefano Tsitsipas has clinched the Monte Carlo Masters for the third time. He crushed 8th seed Kasper Ruud 6-1-6-4 in the final yesterday. Tsitsipas is now the first person in the professional era to win his first three Monte Carlo finals in straight sets. Meanwhile, men's world number one Novak Djokovic has admitted that he is not having a great season. He said this after being knocked out of the Monte Carlo Masters in the semi-finals. Djokovic hasn't won a single title so far this season. He said, and I quote, I'm used to a really high standard in terms of expectations and results. Indonesian shuttler Jonathan Christie captured his first continental title at the Badminton Asia Championships. He beat home favourite Li Shi Feng of China in the men's singles final. Christie downed Li 21-15, 21-16 in straight sets. Ireland's Conor McGregor will make his long-awaited return to the UFC cage. He will fight Michael Chandler at UFC 303 in Las Vegas on the 29th of June. McGregor has, is a former two-division champion. He has not fought since July 2021 and he lost his last two fights. During his last fight against Dustin Poirier in July 2021, McGregor ended up breaking his leg. In entertainment news, the Writers Guild of America Awards took place on Sunday. Here's a look at the winners from the series category. HBO drama series Succession bagged two awards for the Best Drama Series and Best Drama Episode. The Bear got the award for Best Comedy Series. Netflix's Beef took home the Limited Series Award. The Last of Us was given the award for the Best New Series. Meanwhile, on the film side, The Holdovers was felicitated with the uh, Best Original Screenplay Award. American Fiction bagged the award for Best Adapted Screenplay. The Pigeon Tunnel flew away with the Best Documentary Screenplay Award. The 2024 Olivier Awards were held in London, honouring individuals in British theatre. Game of Thrones actor Mark Gattis won the Best Actor honour. Stranger Things The First Shadow won two awards from the Best New Entertainment or Comedy Play and uh, Best Set Design. The Best Family Show was given to Dinosaur World Live. Sunset Boulevard took home the Best Musical Revival Award. According to reports, the Met Gala Committee for 2024 has started sending out invitations to the uh, attendees. Celebrities including Rihanna, Kendall Jenner, Lily Gladstone and Ayo Ediberi will grace the red carpet this year. They will be joined by a few others like Barry Keown, Olivia Rodrigo and Sarah Paulson. This year's theme is The Garden of Time. The Met Gala 2024 will take place on the 6th of May. A vinyl version of Taylor Swift's upcoming album, The Tortured Poets Department, is now up for pre-order. The singer revealed it on social media with a picture of the album's cover. The Tortured Poets Department is due to release on the 19th of April. The musician Grimes apologized for her performance failure at Coachella 2024. She took to uh, X, formerly known as Twitter, to state that it was a big lesson for her. This comes after her equipment man functioned in front of thousands of fans. She tried to fix it, but things broke down several times. 
Grimes promised that her performance next weekend will be flawless. The second part of Coachella will take place from the 19th to the 21st of April in California. Singer Dua Lipa has been roped in to host one of the episodes of Saturday Night Live. She will also double up as the musical guest. Dua Lipa will be seen doing her a double a duty on the 4th of May. The singer is also gearing up for the release of her upcoming album, Radical Optimism, on the 3rd of May. According to estimates, Civil War has topped the North American box office in its first weekend. The film raked in about $25 million. According to experts, it's twice the average for a dystopian thriller on its opening weekend. The film imagines a dystopian near future in the United States. The filming of the John Cena starrer Peace, Peacemaker 2 has commenced. DC Studios co-CEO James Gunn confirmed the news by sharing a picture from the set. James Gunn will be directing a few episodes of the upcoming show. John Cena will share the screen space with actors like Steve Aggie, Danielle Brooks and Freddie Stromer. Shonda Rhimes, who's defined the TV drama era with her shows like Bridgerton and Grey's Anatomy, wishes she had created the sci-fi epic Doctor Who. She reveals being obsessed with the show. Rhimes is gearing up for the release of Bridgerton's third season in May. From impeachments to inaugurations, if it's a political story, we are on the scene. The race for the White House is heating up. We're beating Biden. How dare he say that? If it's breaking news, we're live with the latest coverage. From the White House, the State Department, and Capitol Hill, we know the issues, but above all, we know the players to bring you the latest in-depth analysis on all the key stories that we're covering. I'm Eric Ham. Join me from Washington here on First Post America.